Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that video which is a semi-weekly more like a bi-monthly vlog that I do just to update you on projects I have going on show you new projects I'm getting started direct you back to some old videos or just show you some of the fun new things that I'm trying so the first thing I want to talk about and this was really a splurge but I just wanted to show it to you in case you wanted some ideas for more subdued and fun type lighting well, I have this old touch lamp in here that I needed new bulbs for. And so I was looking specifically for some LED bulbs that were the candle kind, a three-way style bulb. And I saw these ones that were supposed to look more like a flame and I thought, okay, I'll give those a try. Those sound interesting. Well, I got them in, I put them in the touch lamp and though I thought they were cool, they really weren't right for what I need. In case you're new, what I'm doing in this room, this is actually my old ballet slash martial arts studio where I taught for 28 years, I think it was, that I was running the business here. We have converted it into more of a big rec room, but still use this as an area for business because uh, Patrick built me a little room back in here just for my fabrics, for making skirts and aprons and other such things. And then we got a pool table and so on and so forth. So what I'll do is I'll link down below to the last tour I did. Some things have changed a little bit since, but we still have a little bit more updating to do. So you can kind of see what it looks like. And I also show pictures of what it looked like before when I was teaching dance and martial arts in here. But this cabinet, this countertop is a long countertop. And it's an L shape and uh, Patrick built all this. It's one solid countertop that he built out of oak, recycled oak from the equipment trailer. So if you're curious on how he built this, I'll go ahead and link to that video down below. And then the, the cabinets are all our old kitchen, lower kitchen cabinets. Eventually Patrick will get around to rebuilding the upper <laughs> kitchen cabinets, which are the ones that were installed in this house. So you never get to see the pretty beautiful ones that he built for me from scratch that are down below. But I'll go ahead and put a picture of what those look like right here. But anyway, you can go check out those videos. So back to the point of the lights, my whole idea is because the lights I currently have on now are all fluorescent lighting. I have five rows of four sets of fluorescent lights. And that was because this being a business area, that's how we built it to be. Well, when we're having family gatherings in here, I really don't like having all this fluorescent light on. I don't like fluorescent light anyway. And it just isn't very cozy, doesn't feel, it just feels too businessy, especially since after 28 years of teaching in here and that being, this being the business room, I, I just like to feel more subdued and relaxed. So I've been implementing some of my older lamps and trying to get nice, soft, warm light in here, but also trying to find the best ways to save electricity. And also when need be, I can run it off with solar power without it draining our batteries down too much. So anyway, LED lights are the way to go. I know they're also not the healthiest, but when you're trying to run stuff off solar power and save electricity, and, and even saving fuel that we'd use in our, our oil lanterns and gas lanterns, then that's the way to go, really. And so anyway, back to the lights. I felt like since I already opened them up and used them, I really couldn't send them back. And also I liked them enough that I was like, I'd really like to still find a way to use these. So what I discovered, because these are the candle abra, here's one that's open, because it, it was a pack of six. Because they are the candle abra style lights, they will fit in a salt lamp socket or a nightlight socket. So they can be used as that. And so what I did, this is the newest one I got. It's actually four Himalayan salt lamps, was I bought a, a couple of, a few of these now. And you can see right here, this, this uh, glass jar, this is a mason jar that has a chip in the top so I can't use it for canning. So what I did is I turned this into a lantern on its own. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And I'll plug it in so you can see what it looks like. So it takes a second for it to fire up, but there you go. You can see the, it, you know, it kind of looks like it's on fire in there. And it's just another way to add some cozy kind of mood lighting. So I did another one over here behind the garland on the other side. 
And so that, that's kind of, that makes this garland even more useful because it hides the electrical cords that run these. So anyway, here is another one here. This one just came in. And I'll show you another thing that you can do besides using the, uh, the upside down mason jars. That's a quart jar back there. Is that you can get, have, if you have any kind of uh, light, lantern like this that's maybe meant to be used with candles. This one was my mom's. I brought it home when we were, after she passed away and we went to clean out her house. I decided to claim this because I fell in love with it. But anyway, you can just set this inside there and then just close that. And now this has a toggle switch on it here. And so just turn it on. And there we go. Now I can have it lit up just like it's got a candle in there. And yet it's an LED light. So I, it's a safer than having to use candles, especially with grandbabies on the way. Yeah, this, this is just a safer way to go where I can still have that nice subdued, very uh, cozy kind of lighting that just makes it fun. So anyway, there's that. Now, speaking of grandbabies, uh, some of you may have seen the video I did that was basically kind of a, a, a brief, as brief as I could get it, story of my life on how I, you know, basically how I ended up in the town that I'm in and how we got into homesteading, gardening, and all this kind of stuff. And if you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and link it in the description box below. In that video, I did uh, announce that we are going to be grandparents, but one of the things I forgot to add, because I had so many pictures I was putting in there, I forgot to show you the photos of when our son and daughter-in-law came over to give us the announcement. How they did it was in the form of a little onesie. You've probably seen people do that before. And I knew when my son handed me this little white folded up piece of fabric, I was pretty sure I already knew what it was and I was already tearing up and getting all excited. And of course I opened it up and sure enough, this is what it said. And then here are a couple of pictures that Patrick took of me after reading that and I was just I was laughing and crying at the same time because I was so excited I've just I've been looking forward to this for a long time our oldest son he is now 28 years old and me being 54 years old it's time to have grandbabies and so I've been I've been ready for this for a long time just a very exciting moment for us oh yeah I forgot to mention with these particular uh, sockets they also come with uh, six of the little lamps that light light bulbs that you can use either for night lights or if you have salt lamps like we do you can put them in your salt lamp so that ended up being a good deal I didn't even realize that when I bought these but if you're interested in these sockets and then these light bulbs I'll go ahead and link to those the Amazon links down below and anyway, and so now I also have, uh, because I got six of those bulbs with each one, so now I have 18 uh, extra light bulbs to go with my salt lamps when, uh, you know, when those burn out. Okay, so a couple more things I want to talk about is, you might, if you haven't noticed already, seen this spot on my arm, uh, this happened during a canning accident, and it, it was involving using the Easy Seal Tatler lids. Well, I've learned some more about them since. And uh, again, I will cover that in a future video. I want to do some more experiments, but I'll say this right off the bat. If you have Easy Seal, make sure you check. But when they first came out with them, the whole idea was to make it so you didn't, so you could use them just like a metal lid. Well, you can't. You have to use them exactly the same way as the old design. I contacted the company, talked to them back and forth a little bit and then found this out. Now, initially they were advertised as, as being able to use them as a metal lid. And uh, that's why I tightened them down too much. You have to put your band on the same way you do the regular Tatler lids. You just, and I show how to do that. It's actually very easy. And I will link to that video down below as well. And I haven't tried it yet with these, these Easy Seal that I didn't even mean to buy in the first place. <laughs> But I will be experimenting with it, but I'll be doing it with water only until I know that it's right. I want to make sure it does actually work exactly the same way as the older style. Then I'll be doing an update video on it. But anyway, I want to share what happened so that if you have the easy seal, don't make the mistake I did and assume it was like originally advertised that they work the same way as the metal lids, they don't. What happens if you put them on as tight as you would a metal lid, it builds up too much pressure and the lids will blow off and 
explode basically the jar won't necessarily explode I didn't have that happen but what happened was I was canning up some tomatoes and uh, I had seven since I was doing the hot water bath method I had seven quart jars in there three of them lost their lids while in the they were processing and then when it was all done and I went to remove the jars from the canner, the first jar I went to lift out of there. Yes, I know how to lift a jar out of a canner. I've been doing this for years. It also lost its lid and it blew hot tomato contents all, all actually all up my arm. And I think I did get a, fi a few tiny little spots on my face because I felt some stinging spots later in the day. But anyway, it actually burned my thumb all up into my palm and up to here. Thankfully, I was wearing sleeves to here, mm -hmm. but the rest of it ended up on my shirt, so that prevented me from getting burns. And it was a loose-fitting shirt, not tight. If it had been tight sleeves, it still would have burnt me through the shirt. But anyway, um, I know this looks really ugly right now. That's a lot, you know how it is. A lot of times when something is healing up and it's doing better, it looks uglier than it did when it, you were in a lot of pain. And here's actually an image of what it looked like the next morning after I got the initial burn. I was somewhat surprised it didn't blister all the way up into my palm and along my thumb because the day that it burned, I, I could see it look like blisters starting to form in both these areas. But what I did, and this is the part I wanted to share today, I want to share with you what I did. There's so many great ways to help heal up and stop the burning. Obviously, the first thing is rinsing it with cold water. You got to get the burning to stop. And until you can kind of get that calmed down, it can be difficult even trying to put anything on there when it's that painful. Because this was a second degree burn. I mean, I did blister. Uh, the, but it would have been a lot worse had I not taken the measures I did. Now in here I have, let's see, one, two, I have four aloe vera plants. Uh, two of them are quite large and I grow the aloe vera plants. In fact, uh, two of them have a ton of babies. I keep meaning to uh, separate out into more pots so I can either sell them or give them away or just have more plants. But an aloe vera is an excellent plant to have. Yes, I know about manuka honey and, and just raw honey in general, but these were not things that sounded good for one for me to put on the burn. Aloe vera is great on a burn like this because it's already very soothing and cool and easy to apply. Uh, certain oils and stuff, anything that you got to rub on when it's that sensitive might not seem right. Where with an aloe vera, all you got to do is split a leaf open, open it up, and then place it gently on the on the burn and that is the easiest least painful way to go about it in the beginning so that's what I did but I did have to keep going back and forth between doing that and then wearing an ice pack because the burning was it, it was so painful I even took a, a wrist wrap and put a, an ice pack in here and then wrapped that around there and yes I did have a layer of fabric to prevent it from burning worse from the ice it's actually a gel pack is what it is not not just straight ice and so that helped a lot that took the pain out but then when I finally um, I hadn't actually realized so I know the benefits of lavender I didn't realize how good lavender oil was on a burn until somebody suggested it and uh, it took me a while to get brave enough to try it. I thought about the other essential oils I have, but at the time I'm like, nope, not putting that on there, no, 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 no. And I was even nervous about using the lavender oil because, you know, essential oils can be pretty strong and I didn't want it to make it, I didn't want it to hurt more. But I thought, okay, once it got to a point where I felt I could handle it, what I did was I took the oil and then mixed it in with the aloe right in the leaf of the plant and then applied that to my wrist and boy i tell you within a few minutes it took that pain out of there and it stayed gone i couldn't believe it that i didn't i was i was sure that night i was going to have to wear an ice pack on my hand the whole night just to so i could sleep but nope, it was no problem. And I did apply it a couple more times before going to bed and again the next day. And you know, right now it's just, <laughs> part of the reason this spot looks so bad is because 
this blister was really in an unfortunate area because it's also where I was thinking, okay, I better wear my garden gloves. Well, that made it worse because it rubbed the blister. It actually broke open the blister. And then um, because I kept rubbing it against other things, I ended up peeling the skin away. So that, that's the only reason it looks that bad and fresh, more fresh because I keep peeling the skin off because, well, I have work to do. I still have things to do. But anyway, those were really great methods. Now, again, I know the benefits of Manuka honey, but for me, uh, because it is so expensive, I do have about three jars that I stocked up on, but they're little tiny jars. I think I paid $35 a jar for 30 or 35. I got them through, I got them through subscribe and save on Amazon, but I'm trying to reserve that for when absolutely necessary and use other methods that are a lot less expensive, like aloe vera, fresh from the plant, organic, because I'm growing it. So I have it for free. And so to me, that makes the most sense, especially on a burn and especially in the way that you can apply it. So if you're not growing aloe vera, you see some at your local store, whether it be your nursery or even our, our grocery stores where I got mine initially, you know, just little tiny plants and they will they do great in pots in the house if you live in a cooler climate like we do. And my my aloe vera is big and healthy and it's been useful so many times like that and also if you accidentally like i did several times break any leaves off take the leaves stick them in the freezer and there you go now you have cold you have iced aloe vera that you can use but anyway that's a way to preserve it so you don't have to throw out the leaf okay and then the other thing i've been doing is taking a little bit of my homemade salve this is a skin healing salve and since it really doesn't even hurt anymore i've been applying this on there especially where i keep peeling that uh, skin back if i'd stop using it um, but that's also where my wrist sets when i'm editing videos but anyway i've been rubbing that on there and that's also been helping quite a bit too so this is a this was made from a homegrown herbs that i infused in oil and then mixed with some other ingredients to make this salve and I will go ahead and link to the videos below that show both how I made the oil, the, that specific one I used in this blend, and then what I used in the salve itself because I also added some essential oils to this. And it's been helping quite a bit. So there's just a couple of different ideas. And I know there's a zillion other ideas. And yes, I did also spray some colloidal silver on there. Once the, once the When I realized I broke open that blister, I, that's when I started putting the colloidal silver on there to help prevent uh, the homemade colloidal silver, by the way, to help prevent infection from setting in. Okay, two more things. Uh, uh, one of the, I did a video that you might have seen fairly recently about mints, and I was talking in that video how orange mint hasn't been my favorite for a hot tea. However, I have been doing some experimenting, and one of them was blending it with my newer thyme, which is a golden thyme that has already, not it's not lemon thyme, but it does tend to have a little bit more of a citrus flavor, so I tried blending those two together, the orange mint with the golden thyme to make a tea, and that was really good. But my favorite way to blend it so far is with the lemon balm. So the orange mint with the lemon balm makes a very tasty tea. So that, so I've been making that fresh as we have these herbs coming in fresh. Mostly the peppermint is our favorite most of the time, but it is nice to mix it up a little bit. And so um, dehydrating up tons of peppermint for tea throughout the year while also using fresh peppermint now to make teas. But the orange mint and lemon balm has been a real nice blend and very just, I'm really, really enjoying it. So we can switch that up from the peppermint one night to the orange mint and lemon balm another night. And uh, usually our spicy teas we do more in the winter time. I don't crave those so much this time of year, which makes sense. Okay, and then one more thing I wanna talk about was I finally, after so many people have mentioned it, I've never tried it. Some of you may recognize what this is. And um, this is jaggery. So I wanted to try it just because I was curious about it. Now jaggery is still sugar. And most of the time it's cane sugar, but I believe sometimes it is made from date sugar. But at any rate, it's basically your, you know, if you're getting the cane sugar, it's cane sugar that still has some of the molasses left in it. And, and yet there's something different about the way it's processed. It's a little healthier in the way it's processed, but it's also um, 
has a different flavor than let's say a brown sugar it's similar yet more caramel tasting and it just it sounded <laughs> when i read that i'm like i have got to try that because of all the sweet things caramel is my favorite i like it better than chocolate and so I try. I did buy some through subscribe and save. I'll go ahead and put the link down below. Unfortunately, I won't get my shipment in this month because I want to get a few of these to have on hand for just special things. Now, some people claim there's a lot of health benefits and stuff. Now, here's what I'll say. Yes, it does have more benefits over a processed white sugar because, well, you've got, or even your blonde organic sugar because it has more minerals in it, more nutrients, but it's still sugar. You can't look at it as, oh, I'm going to use this for health reasons. If you're wanting a healthier sugar option, especially over your GMO beet, white beet sugar that you typically buy in a store this is a good option but if you're trying to get away from sugar entirely this is not a good option but i tell you what it sure tastes good and so one of the things i did with it the first thing the first and only thing i've done with it so far is to make patrick some banana coconut pineapple creamsicles and use this for the sweetener and even though i don't usually eat those i always taste it as i'm making it so i can see you know, because I'm always, I don't use measurements. I always mix things up, especially when I'm trying something new like this. I have no idea how much I put in there. But um, anyway, I wanted to see how the flavor turned out. And it blended so nicely, the flavor with these ingredients, and just turned out really tasty. By using this, at least, even though it's still sugar, he's getting a little bit more of the good nutrients that you get in the molasses that is in naturally occurring in your cane sugars. And that's why molasses is good. Even, a, even like a tablespoon of molasses, you're getting lots of magnesium and so many other minerals that are necessary. And some people will have a tablespoon of molasses a day to get a lot of those minerals. And here's a really yummy way to that I like. I'm not a milk drinker. I just don't like plain milk, never have. However, I have taken milk and taken a, a good tablespoon or two of molasses and mixed it in there like you would when you're making chocolate milk except for molasses milk oh my goodness i loved it so if you like the taste of molasses at all you and you like milk at all you may really like that if you're dairy free then i recommend trying it with nut milk so let's say you make your almond milk or your pecan cashew milk or your brazil nut milk and yes i have lots of nut milk making videos because i do love nut milk one of the most recent ones that i had been making a lot is the hazelnut brazil nut milk and that's a really that one's really good. But anyway, whatever your favorite nut milk is to make, or even coconut milk, yes, I make that too. Uh, try mixing the molasses in that if you're wanting to get some more of those good healthy nutrients that are in molasses, and you can make yourself a tasty and healthy drink. Now, it's still gonna have some sweetening in it, it's still gonna be some sugar, but it's gonna be a lot healthier for you than making like a, just a standard chocolate milk. Okay, well, I ended up talking a lot longer on just the five different subjects and I expected I would and so that's it for my this and that video for this week or at least for the next two weeks depending on when I get the next one out hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching take care and God bless <music>